Geek Gamers was well on its way to being packed to go to its northern outpost in Vermont for a little while when one of the little geeks got sick. So we are here and I was packing up a game to take with me with the hope that I could get some playing in. And in packing that, I discovered this catalog. This is an Avalon Hill catalog from, um, the date here is 1186. And we got our crochet hook already packed, so... We got that to help us out here. And I thought I would uh, take a look at it with you because I had forgotten that I had it. And I did a reading through of the 1997 Avalon Hill catalog, which was one of the last ones. And I forgot that I had this one from the 80s. And now, of course, I want to look and see if I can find one from the 70s. But I thought there's, there's some cool stuff in here that you might be interested to see. In this catalog, we have the cover is not any piece of art. In the other one, you might recall, it was a mishmash of a historical and fantasy piece. Here we just have the, um, the Avalon Hill Game Company listing. Victory Games, part of it then prominently listed here with its offerings. And we also have some microcomputer games here that um, we will be showing. And we've got this little uh, asterisk reminding you that this is Divisions of Monarch Avalon Inc. The back cover shows something really cool. I didn't remember this was even in here. So here is a um, sports simulation. We got tactics to and surprise, surprise, we have a jigsaw puzzle. Yes, indeed, there are jigsaw puzzles in this catalog and we'll take a look at them at the end. We also have some further um, things that they're promoting. You might remember the good old Dr. Ruth game from the prior catalog. And uh, we could order by credit card, etc. And again, here is the date. I do have a price list. I'm not going to show you, but as with the other video I did, I'll put up the pricing just for, um, for your interest in some subtitles. We open it up and we see a much shorter table of contents here than we had in the other game. And what's of note to me at any rate. Well, first of all, here's the puzzles listed at the end. There are, we're leading off Leisure Time and Family Rec, which I think was the, what they let off with in the other catalog I read. Role playing, Sports Illustrated, Military Sims, Microcomputer Games, and then the puzzles. But guess what? No sci-fi, no fantasy in this catalog. So that means, for example, no Magic Realm listed, uh, no uh, Wizard's Quest, no Stellar Conquest out. The Avalon Hill Game Company, a subsidiary of Monarch Avalon Inc., has grown from a backyard garage operation, early 50s, to its present multi-million dollar design and publishing house, largely by diversification. The broad line focuses on all skill strategy games that mirror real life situations. We have won more major awards for excellence in games than any other game publisher today consistently placing more games than does any competitor each and every year on the Games Magazine prestigious Best 100 list. I subscribed to that magazine and actually won a uh, contest in it. Sports Illustrated, when I was a kid, <laughs> Sports Illustrated Magazine chose us as their venture partner in the marketing of a line of all skill games based on major sports, emphasizing statistical accuracy and solitaire playability features. Victory Games Inc., a stablemate, adds diversification in their design of simulation games that appeal to the hardcore military historian. Victory also designs for the leisure time market, successfully marketing the Playboy Elegant Lifestyles game, I'm going to show you that, and the highly educational Dr. Ruth's Game of Good Sex, which is the best-selling game of the entire group. Another sister company, the Microcomputer Games Division, publishes a variety of action and skill games for play on such popular home computer systems as etc. And then it says, because the printing division boasts skilled technicians second to none, a line of jigsaw puzzles called Incredible Edibles now graces the lineup. A variety of 12 different 1,000 piece puzzles, they are based on artist Ed Pardee's popular posters of the same name. Such diversification quite naturally precludes listing every game. Instead, we have showcased in this catalog approximately 30 of our most popular titles. And then it says that they have a complete catalog. Now, I do wonder, um, that being said, here are some more of the credits. You can see the copyright line down here. Um, I do wonder... 
could this possibly mean that nothing in uh, fantasy was one of their most popular titles? I don't know about that. I really do wonder about that. Nevertheless, we're not going to see that here. So that was the explanation. The first game here is Acquire, playing time of two hours, and um, a game for two to six players that takes you into the world of hotels. Players start hotel chains and expand them by building more hotels around them. At the same time, they can buy stock in any active chains, even those begun by other players, etc. Game ends when all chains have been merged into one. It includes here 808 plastic hotel tiles, 7 hotel tell chain tiles, information cards, etc. Now there's no complexity rating on this one. Most of the games do have the Avalon Hill complexity rating. I'll point that out when I see it, but I didn't see that there. Trivia game here, trivia. Uh, Trivial Pursuit cards. So, um, let's see. For sheer quality of printing and brilliance of play, the Avalon Hill Company Games Game of Trivia is superb. Players earn their degree as Bachelor of Trivia by answering questions on subjects ranging from space travel to rock and roll, classic literature, bluegrass music, etc. And here we have Playboy, the game of elegant lifestyles. A lot of stuff in that box. See how closely you can see that. There are cards, there's a board, there's tokens. Let's see. Number of players, two to six. Components, one to two hours. Scoring pad, 50 romance cards. Object of the game. Each player gets a personal satisfaction goal. Throughout the game, the players must buy possessions to meet or exceed this number. Players must also get a romantic partner by accumulating positive trait cards from the romance card pile. The first person to reach both goals wins the game. Players take turns rolling the die and moving around the board, etc. And let's see, we can go to... There are four tracks on the board. The executive suite, where players can raise or lower their salary. Shopping mall. Social scene which is the place to meet exciting people and gain romance cards and the fast lane where the most chances are taken and the greatest successes or failures occur. Again, I don't see any complexity there. Doc Here's Dr. Ruth's Game of Good Sex. Dr. Ruth Westheimer's unique brand of frank, down-to-earth responses to questions on sexuality can now be found in a fun and informative board game for one to four couples. Couples move around the board, accumulating arousal points as they visit Dr. Rue's sex clinic and answer questions relating to each other's sexual awareness. Who else but Dr. Ruth could discuss boudoir technique without sending the FCC into convulsions, asks the Philadelphia Inquirer. So Dr. Ruth's game of good sex, one to seven. Oh, this is the other, the computer game. Playing time varies. Okay, again, no complexity. And so now we move on to, here we go, pulling back to show you full page uh, ad here for the James Bond RPG. This is, uh, I have a bunch of uh, other ads of theirs and other, I have a lot of this material and this is an oft reprinted piece of art for their ad. Enter the Victory Games World of James Bond 007 and here we here we have it. Now the world's most exciting role-playing game. America's favorite movie series has become Victory Games' popular role-playing game. Now it is possible to put yourself in the role of the good guys and the bad guys, including Q, Goldfinger, Odd Job, Jaws, and the rest. You can experience the life of a secret agent, recreating most of the adventures featured in the captivating action and adventure film series. Great for groups where imagination is the keynote to fun. Ideal for t ages 10 and up. Um, if you watch my channel, you know I've treated uh, James Bond Assault. This is really not, this is a war game. This is a uh, tactical war game. And uh, there are some rules for incorporating some RPG elements into it. But um, this is actually not equivalent to um, these here. But nevertheless, I love this series. I've had this series. This has been a part of my gaming life for a long, long time. James Bond. All right. Next, we come to Outdoor Survival. In the uh, catalog I read you from the 90s, this had a much smaller listing. Player time, one hour. Here we go. Here's the picture of the art, the board. Can't really see it that clearly here, but. You are lost in the woods, far from home, with no food or water. Can you survive? Outdoor Survival is a game for nature lovers and closet dwellers alike. There are actually five basic games called scenarios within the game. And then they explain what they are and what you get with the game. 
And again, no complexity level listed here. Two, three, or four players. Playing time, one hour. You'll also enjoy these other leisure time games. And I guess they, uh, you know, they obviously they've got Go here. And um, so I don't know whether these are all games that they actually publish. Book of Lists, based on the number one bestseller, includes lists from the Bantam book. I had that book when I was a kid, actually. I was sort of obsessed with it. Sleuth. Um, so, Leisure Time Games, another big, 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 big full-page picture for RuneQuest, the best of role-playing, voted number one by British, British Games Day National Convention. Some great art here, and inside of the box, and here we go. The most popular adult role-playing system ever. RuneQuest allows players to create mystical worlds of adventure. Ideal for groups of three or more, you learn to use sorcery and magic to combat the forces of evil. A continuing series of new modules provides new adventures to experience in this role-playing system voted number one in Great Britain at etc. All right. Enjoyment of the RuneQuest game system, which combines history with myth, is limited only by the imagination of the participants. And we can see, coming soon, Land of Ninja. Anyway, there is RuneQuest. We move into some sports here. Um, stat, we got Status Pro Baseball, Football, and uh, down here, Bowl Bound. I guess that's College. Sports Illustrated has scouted the top college teams, and the actual play-by-plays of their games have been computer analyzed and converted into easy-to-use play-action charts. Interesting. Two to four players. Um, I'll just come back up here to look at the baseball here. You get over 700 players. Not even Steinbrenner can own that many players. Well, that's funny. That's funny to me, uh, having grown up in New York as a Yankees fan. But you can. Status Pro Baseball comes with stat cards representing every player of every big league team that performed regularly in the previous season. That's more than 700 individual cards. Avalon Hill has computer analyzed season long stats for each player's hitting, fielding, pitching, base stealing, bunting, game winning hits, even stamina, converting it all to fast action results. I have to say, I have never game for a great game for solitaire replay. Um, I have never owned one of these games or played one, but I would actually really, really like to as a uh, old-time baseball and football fan. Status Pro Baseball, we have two. Excuse me, basketball, uh, we've got two. And there we go. Pay Dirt is another football. I think that was featured on the back. To create Pay Dirt, we've scattered all 28 pro, pro teams. We've determined their strengths and weaknesses on offense, defense, and special teams. We've converted all of this, easy to use charts and cards, etc. Never out of date because you just purchase a new game every year. And don't miss these other Sports Illustrated games. We got baseball strategy, football strategy, other regatta, title bout, auto racing, really everything here, tennis. Win, place, and show. Golf, pennant race, really everything. Back to AH, Avalon Hill Game Company. Here's Tactics 2. Uh, and we're, here we have some complexity uh, on there. Complexity rating 2, playing time 2 hours. I did an unboxing of this. Uh, vid I did a video of an unboxing of this. The hobby of wargaming was born in the late 1950s with the inception of Avalon Hill's Tactics. By divine right, Tactics 2, a direct descendant, is the original wargame. Tactics, Tactics 2 is sort of like military chess. Different pieces called, quote, units in wargames have different capabilities, just like chess pieces. Interesting, because this, you know, this copy here coming in the 80s, I mean, this copy is... is really dated from the original when it needed to be explained what it was. Game features include special functions for HQ units, terrain effects, invasions, airborne assaults, weather, replacements, isolation, and even nuclear weapons. I actually don't remember that part. Units represent infantry armor, mountain airborne headquarters, and amphibious troops, over 100 counters in all. It is still an outstanding introductory game for potential hobby members. I have to agree. I would still say that. Actually, the armies in the game are equal. Victory will be gained by a combination of luck, of logic, foresight, luck, common sense, and skill in military strategy and tactics. More importantly, though, you will have entered a hobby that can bring a lifetime of enjoyment because games are, first and foremost, fun. 
All right, military simulations, war at sea, complexity rating one, playing time one hour, an elegantly simple system that has made war at sea the best introductory war game around. Well, or this one, I don't know. Somewhat surprisingly, it has also become a favorite among experienced war gamers as well. And uh, it says it abstractly portrays the battle for the Atlantic during World War II between the British and German fleets. It tells you what you need to do. Full page on ASL, really nice, uh, nice image here of so much stuff. It's it's hard. It, honestly, it was really even hard for me to see. I needed a micro, uh, uh, a glass to see this. But there's some modules here, some maps, counter sheets, maps, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Advanced squad leader, a completely redesigned version of wargaming of Wargaming's most popular system. ASL comes in a three-ring binder, yay. Contains close to 200 pages that tie together the original Squad Leader, Cross of Iron, Crescendo of Doom, and GI Anvil of Victory under one comprehensive rules format. ASL does not make Squad Leader obsolete, but cannot be used with existing Squad Leader modules. That's what Beyond Valor is for. BV, the first ASL module, contains 10 brand new World War II scenarios, 4 geomorphic map boards, and they give you the numbers, and 12 sets of troop counters, totaling 2,396 individual die-cut pieces, representing thousands of military vehicles, weapons, and manpower. Beyond Valor doesn't even require an opponent, although having one adds strategic placement to what is basically attack play Oh, sorry. Although having one adds a strategic play element to what is basically a tactical level game. I'm, my coffee is, I got to get more coffee. All right. <clears throat> Paratrooper is the second module in the ASL series, which means it is not a complete game unto itself. Players will need boards of one to four, a squad leader, etc. So it's explaining all of this to you and, um, there you go. Let's see. The bottom here, on the first deluxe ASL module is titled Streets of Fire, a game of tactical warfare 41 to 45, called deluxe because of the large hex size. Streets of Fire contains no rules or counters, and ownership of squad leader or ASL is a must. However, you do get four geom geomorphic boards with hexes large enough to eliminate staggering or to allow you to lose to use one 285th scale micro armor miniatures instead of the traditional unit counters. The game includes 10 specialty design scenarios depicting the bitter street fighting of the Eastern Front. Interesting, I'm not sure. I'm not an ASL person, but uh, I actually have never heard of that. That sounds pretty cool. So there's a page to all the ASL material. Third Reich, this has a complexity rating of 10. Uh, playing time scenarios two hours and up, campaign game eight hours. Lists the awards, best game of the year, Charles Roberts Award in S74, best game of the year, best game of all time from Campaign Magazine. There's the picture on every hardcore gamer's list of best games. From the invasion of Poland in 1939 to ultimate victory or defeat, Third Reich recreates World War II in Europe on a grand strategic level for two to six players. Actually, six games in one. It includes a campaign game, advanced campaign, multiplayer game, etc. And a mammoth 32 by 22 map board depicts Europe from Norway to Egypt and Ireland over the Ural Mountains in Russia. Over 500 counters represent armor, infantry, airborne, partisan, air, and naval forces of six major powers and 14 minor countries. Game features include costs for offensive options, attrition, production, conquest, alliances, intervention, neutrality, breakthrough combat, exploitation, airborne assaults, amphibious assaults, shore bombardment, sea, escort, air, naval bases, air missions, convoys, strategic warfare variations, and much more. We've got the Russian front down here, complexity rating 5. Um, I'm going to go a little bit faster here now. Coming up to firepower, uh, complexity rating 5. Interestingly, I noticed um, in the video I did on the Avalon Hill 1997 catalog, the complexity rating of firepower in that was 6, which is probably more accurate. I mean, my maybe my standards are um, different, but um, I, I would say this is higher than a complexity rating of 5. And 
if you watch my video on it, you can see partially why just from opening up the box. Playing time, 30 minutes to 3 hours. 30 minutes, I don't know, it takes 30 minutes to open the box, truly. Designed especially for solitaire play. This interested me because I... I uh, it's interesting that they say that. Firepower is a detailed look at the organization, weapons, equipment, and tactics of many of the world's nations since 1965. Um, and it goes on to explain what you, ha what you can do there um, and how it is a system that is meant to be used for various different simulations of over time in different nations. It gives players the opportunity to command squad units in recent or current wars and to experiment with their own squad organizations. Um, what it doesn't say here, it, it says, well, at the end here, it says, with the three games in one package, basic, advanced, and optional, you can choose the level of complexity and detail desired. Well, that's true. Here they're showing you some of the maps, so maybe that's why they're giving it a five, because you can make it less detailed. What they don't mention here, what I found interesting myself, is that there's a little RPG rule set uh, that allows you to um, kind of RPG-ish some of your units, which I think is incredibly cool. Magazines and game accessories. Adventure gaming is as much a hobby as it is a recreational pastime. We were the first to recognize this phenomenon by introducing the industry's first magazine, The General, created solely to enhance enjoyment of our games. That was back in 1964. A good year. The General is still growing strong today, along with Heroes Magazine, a new publication for role-playing buffs. So here we see The General. I guess we did not get a picture of the Heroes magazine, which is too bad. Well, see, they're eliminating, you know, they're eliminating any kind of um, fantasy stuff uh, from this, except for that, the mention of the RPG. But in addition, we publish many scenarios and game accessories that enhance the game's realism. Not always readily available in game stores, these items can be purchased directly from us. Here we have Empires in Arms, another complexity 10 rating, playing time 2 to 200 hours. Empires in Arms is a game covering the major elements of diplomacy and warfare during the Napoleonic Wars of 1805 to 1815. You, as a player, are the absolute monarch of a major European power and guide that nation through the maze of conflicting interests and ambitions that characterize Napoleonic Europe. Each major power has its own individual economic, military, and geographic advantages and disadvantages. Players negotiate alliances, dictate peace treaties, administrator administer conquests and conduct warfare on land and sea by maneuvering corps and fleets in the constant struggle for survival, etc. Uh, we have what it's including in various scenarios and things like that. Here is Diplomacy, awards best game of the year, Games and Puzzles magazine, complexity rating 3, playing time 4 hours and up. Here's the picture you get with that. For seven players with special rules for two to six, this is a game of political power, shifting alliances, backstabbing, and psychological intimidation. Each player represents one of the seven pre-World War major powers, and they're listed there. It's a series of negotiation periods, and players try to outwit and outtalk their opponents. To win, one country must total half of the map board. Acclaimed by Games and Puzzles magazine as the greatest indoor board game invented this century. No dice and no luck. And here we turn to some air games, Knights of the Air. Picture there. Recreates the deadly combat of the World War II air war. You learn to fly the greatest airplanes of the period, much the same way the Aces did, right in the cockpit using control stick, throttle, and rudder. Pedals, uh, many of the great war planes are here. Each airplane has been designed to perform just like its real-life counterpart, making this game an authentic recreation of World War II, World War I aerial combat. Complexity rating, 5. B-17, Queen of the Skies. Here you can see that. Is the Avalon Hill Game Company's new strategy game, which recreates the bombing missions and aerial combat of the B-17 Model F bombers of the U.S. 8th Air Force over Europe between November 42 and May 43, etc.? As the mission grinds on, you'll start to sweat. Wounded crewmen, low ammunition, burned out engines, oil leaks, and more enemy fighters create gameplay excitement in, a, in this game designed for solitaire play. Complexity rating of 3, playing time 15 minutes to 1 hour. I've actually never played this game, so I can't comment on that, but that seems a little suspicious. 15 minutes. Flight leader. Well, I guess if your plane goes down right away. I don't know. I don't know. 
Flight leader puts you in the cockpit of a high-performance jet fighter commanding two to eight high-performance aircraft. Here is the uh, box complexity rating of four, two dozen scenarios, 200 different jet aircraft types. That seems cool. Design oh, it was designed by a USAF fighter pilot. As such, is highly realis realistic, yet easy and fun to play. Here we have some victory games, Six Fleet. Modern naval combat in the Mediterranean. Six Fleet is a simulation of near-future combat for control of the Mediterranean. As commander of the U.S. or Soviet fleet and its allies, you must use your task forces to cripple your enemy's surface and subsurface forces, carefully allocating your limited air assets and elite units to capture vital objectives. Play Six Fleet time and again, taking advantage of all 14 scenarios arranged for graduated complexity. And it gives the components here, medium to high, our solitaire suitability is high, complexity medium. Second Fleet, modern naval combat in the North Atlantic. There's the picture here, Aegean Strike. Moving a little faster here to another full page spread we get for Ambush. So you can see they reserve their full page spreads for some high ticket items. This is a really nice picture showing uh, all you get with Ambush and uh, down here, the two expansions, Move Out and Purple Heart. Ambush, the original game that puts the guts into solitaire gaming. Well, you know what? Who can disagree with that? The 1983 Charles Roberts Award winner for Best 20th Century Game. Build your squad, assign your weapons, and set out on a hair-raising mission through World War II France. But be careful, this game will react to your every move in the most unexpected and deadly ways. Tells you what you get and including those awesome mission cartridges. And what's complexity, medium, solitaire, suitability, very high, obviously. And your two expansions here, Move Out and Purple Heart. The first ambush follow-on module, Move Out, includes four original missions, each of which can be played using the playing pieces and map sheets from Ambush. You must own Ambush, etc. And Purple Heart, same deal. So there is great listing for Ambush. And Battle Him, a game I have not played but want to try to get. Squad-level World War II combat in the Pacific. Based on the award-winning ambush program Paragraph Solitaire System, Battle Him takes you on an adventure into the thick of World War II Pacific theater combat. You need not own Ambush in order to play Battle Him. It tells you what you get. And then, uh, I guess staying with the Pacific, we get Pacific War, The Struggle Against Japan, 41 to 45, featuring 21 scenarios. Pacific War is the complete game on World War II Pacific theater, covering the entire war in monthly turns from the attack on Pearl Harbor through the climactic summer of 1945. Every aspect of strategic importance, from task force disposition to amphibious assault to Japanese merchant shipping attrition to U.S. code-breaking efforts, is detailed in a coherent, quality, quickly mastered design. Well, does that say 2,340 half-inch counters? I guess quickly mastered is a pretty high bar, but nevertheless, uh, playing time is from a mere one to 100 hours. Complexity, medium to very high depending on scenario. Solitaire suitability is high. Mosby's Raiders, one of my all-time favorite games from this era. Guerrilla Warfare in the Civil War, the first solitaire game on the Civil War. Mosby's Raiders takes you along on the daring raids of John Mosby and his band of Southern partisans against the weight of the Union Army in Northern Virginia. Easy to learn and eminently replayable. The game features historical notes, random events, and optional rules. Playing time, two hours. Uh, complexity medium. Yeah, I'd say that's true. And now we have the microcomputer games division of the Avalon Hill Game Company. I won't go into detail on this except to show you these awesome screenshots. <laughs> There's a screenshot. Uh, Mac Pro Football. 40 teams. Super Sunday. Some more awesome screenshots. Full screen reenactment of all your plays. There, that's what it's going to look like for you. And some great graphics here. Again, 1986. All right. Getting it up is only half the fun. No comment on that. Spitfire 40, really great piece of art here. It's hard to, hard to show you the whole thing, but I'll try to show it to you here. Really great. 
really great art. More than just a flight simulation, it is a matter of life and death with you at the controls of one of the world's most versatile aircraft. The cockpit has working dials, gauges, and compass. T taking off, landing, and flying are based on the Mark I Supermarine Spitfire, right down to fuel pump problems actual pilots faced while diving. With a choice of simulator and game scenarios, the game gives any number of players a chance to shoot down enemy aircraft. Comes with authentic pilot's notes, similar to those the RAF handed out to its pilots. You'll be flying one of the most memorable planes of World War II with a little luck, a little skill, and by the seat of your pants. So uh, we've got these versions forthcoming, and uh, there's a little screenshot of what you get. Under fire... World War II war game construction set for your Apple. Here's what you get. Three discs, etc. This is what disc one and disc two have. Again, I'm not really going to go into detail on here, but there, that's your great art there. <laughs> uh, Gulf Strike. So there's a bunch of computer stuff here in the back, as we can see. And then coming to the end here with the puzzles. Here they are. Pining for a melon? Hey, that's not a melon, and it's not a pineapple either. This gourmet surprise is just one of the mouth-watering array of food fantasies called Incredible Edibles Jigsaw Puzzles. Each 20 by 27 puzzle has 1,000 interlocking pieces, a delectable line of gallery-quality images created by artist-photographer Ed Pardee. Each has been painstakingly sculpted, fitted together in lifelike colors, then faithfully reproduced by the Avalon Hill Game Company. Here is... That pineapple melon one, it's a little darkly dark. Let's see if I can get better light here on that. Uh, expect the unexpected with each incredible edible jigsaw puzzle. All 12 are extremely challenging. No trick photography or studio touch-up has been employed. We have kiwi potatoes, uh, juicy apple-orange hybrid that guarantees double takes. Then there's the Cabbage, copia, brussel mother, and all the little sprouts. Well, that's really hilarious. This is pretty funny. I guess that's mushrooms and peas. There's a tomato something or other. Um, those of you who happen to read my uh, thread from when I was Geek of the Week on BGD know that I like jigsaw puzzles a lot and usually have one out. I'm not sure that I would... Is that a walnut? That's a walnut and a cabbage, maybe. Not sure I would try to track this down, but this is really kind of funny. The puzzles themselves, I think, would be a little challenging to do. So a lot of similar space here. I do like that kiwi potato, though. <laughs> I do. So didn't think you'd be getting a kiwi potato in this reading of the Avalon Hill catalog, but there you have it. That is the end of the catalog. Again, here's the back, back of it featuring that puzzle, Tactics 2, Battle Him on my trying to find list, and, of course, good old Dr. Ruth.